Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Welcome back to Big Mouth. You can keep this conversation going over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad because I'm absolutely Movies TV Mad or Movies TV Bonkers, whatever you want to call me. So, welcome to my latest video. And this is my opinion. This is a think piece that the future of Star Wars is with Disney+. Plus. When we look at the rise of Skywalker, we look at the negativity out there, especially from the fandom menace, but from a lot of other fans as well, it's pretty obvious that this film is going to be belabeled with problems. No matter what they do for this film, it isn't going to end well, and there's going to be a Game of Thrones final season style of negativity. You can just feel it in your bones. It wouldn't surprise me if the rise of Skywalker is the final cinematic Star Wars film ever. And if you get your paranoia on, you may even think that they did this on purpose. Let me explain to you what I'm thinking. My train of thought here. Think about it. What would sell Disney Plus the most? Star Wars. It's the greatest thing they own. I know it's in a bit of a mess right now. I know fans are split over it. But at the end of the day, when you look at what they're doing for Star Wars Disney+, Plus, you've got the Mandalorian. People like what they see from the tra trailers. They like the people running it. And you've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, miniseries as well. And you've got the Cassian Andor um, show they're doing as well. All those things look really, really good and really, really interesting. Meanwhile, you've got the Rise of Skywalker with all this negativity because it comes after the flop that was Solo. It comes after The Last Jedi that split the fandom in two. And I just feel they've done this on purpose. I think they've kibwashed the whole cinematic Star Wars experience purposely so they can exclusively have it on Disney+. Plus. Because just imagine if everything was going swimmingly for the Star Wars movies cinematically, um, it would be a very hard sell to have Star Wars exclusively on Disney+. Plus. But what does it do to have Disney+, uh, a Disney Plus exclusivity with Star Wars. What it does is it means you can't see anywhere else, right? You can only see the content there, and that means you have to subscribe to Disney Plus. Now, the interesting thing is really with this, obviously, so Star Wars is a bit of a hard sell. I admit, with all the negativity going around, I just had the feeling, and I, I, and I do feel that the departure of Dan and Dave is the last straw. It's kind of the rod that broke the camel's back. They can now justify saying no more cinematic movies. They have only one apparently coming, and that is the Kevin Feige Star Wars film. I'd be very surprised if that happens. At least I'd be very surprised if it happens cinematically, right? Nobody knows where that's going to be released anyway. But if I was a betting man, I'm not a betting man. I think betting's a, and gambling's a mugs game, by the way. I'd rather smoke and take drugs. Hey, mugs away, right? But if I was a betting man, I'd say you aren't going to see any more cinema-released Star Wars content. Now, of course, I want to know what you think about this. Please comment down below or at me on Twitter. I'm never going to say don't at me, at Movies TV Mad. Don't forget that. Write that down so you don't forget. But yes, I want to know what you think about my little theory here. But I do believe that The Rise of Skywalker will be the final Star Wars film released in theatres, released in the cinema. Now, of course, this is a very controversial school of thought. But if you think about it along the lines that I'm thinking about it, you'll come to the same conclusion that there really isn't any point in releasing Star Wars um, theatrically anymore. And of course, they may not have decided on this yet. I think they have. This is my theory, and I'm hearing some rumours, but of course it's all about the box office. And of course, if the box office is ridiculously low, we don't know. We've seen the fandom men in Monis. That's a good one for them, isn't it? The fandom menace. Um, but you see what they've had to say. They've shown maps, and I don't know how they've got these, but they've got graphs of the seating and what's been sold and what hasn't. Now, as I, as I say, I don't know how they do this. Do they get them off the cinemas? I don't know. But they happen to know what's selling, uh, what theatre and what's not. 
It's very interesting. Now, what they're saying is their school of thought is everything should be sold out by now. And maybe it should, but we're not there. We're not we're not at a build-up of, of a Star Wars film that everyone's excited about. I must admit, I'm intrigued and a little bit excited. My feeling is that J.J. Abrams will pull this off. I think he's going to throw everything at this film. I think it will be a good, maybe not great, but I think it will be a good film. Will it bring confidence back into Star Wars? I don't know. The truth is, it is an absolute calamitous mess. When you've got professional people running a franchise like this, this should never have happened. The Force Awakens kind of went really well. Financially, they made a lot of money. People were genuinely excited with all the threads and questions that JJ left us with after The Force Awakens. The only thing you can label at JJ after The Force Awakens, really, is only about 30 seconds of Luke Skywalker. But it was a great cliffhanger. And we were absolutely so excited for The Last Jedi. Now, when you go to Rogue One, that film eventually turned out okay, made a hell of a lot of money, but behind the scenes, already, they had an absolute mess. And you have to ask the question, why? So, in the end, they brought a troubleshooter in. He kind of fixed it, and it was, look, it's a really good film. It, it, it really is. I mean, it does rely on a lot of, I mean, the blue milkshake and things like that. I mean, come on. There's shout-outs and fan service. And there's things that you don't need. The Darth Vader thing at the end was awesome. It's a pretty good movie. They saved that movie, but they had a lot of problems they didn't need to have. Then you get to The Last Jedi, which really did have a good box office. Nowhere near as good as The Force Awakens. You would kind of expect some kind of downturn. Um, it's like a season premiere. Uh, that gets big ratings if it's a big show, but you have a drop-off. Um, but the reaction to The Last Jedi from the actual Star Wars fans wasn't good, and that's where the fandom menace was born, wasn't it? So now you're here at the crux of a situation, and before that film's even released, we hear that Dan and Dave have quit. Dan and Dave quit because they did a deal with Netflix. Once they did that deal with Netflix, they would have gone back to Disney, and they would have said, listen, we can't do both. We've decided to join Netflix. Again, Netflix have got one up. On Disney. Now the bloggers and the Disney fans won't like me saying that, but that's the truth. So where we are now is quite kind of perilous, but not. It's pretty obvious to me that uh, I forgot the name of it already. What's it called? What's it called? God, well, the Mandalorian. God, I forget so easily. Getting old, but you, you look at the reaction to the Mandalorian trailers. Um, Dave Filoni's involved in that, of course, which is great. It's about time too that they brought him in. He knows what he's doing. He was trained by George Lucas himself. The Mandalorian is going to be a success. It's going to get a good reaction. I just know it. I've got a good feeling about the Mandalorian. It's the same with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and the other one as well. They've got three shows in development. In November, the Mandalorian begins. So I think on in terms of Disney Plus with Star Wars, it's going to go very well. And what you'll see in the next few years, they'll start ordering kind of straight to streaming Star Wars series, miniseries and movies. And they will be top notch movies. So all of a sudden you start questioning things. Why was the, the why were the Star Wars stories in so much trouble? Why was the trilogy such a mess? You have to ask the question and say, did they do this on purpose to secure exclusivity of Star Wars on Disney Plus? And for me, it's a big fat yes. Um, now, what do I think about this? Well, of course, no Star Wars in cinemas is a big tragedy. You know, really, Star Wars was kind of the birth of cinema, the birth of the blockbuster, if you like. So to not have any Star Wars in cinemas is an absolute tragedy. But we are in the era of the streaming service. You know, you know, may the streaming wars commence, and they have commenced. And Star Wars is a big weapon against Netflix, Prime Video, and even uh, HBO Max. So if they do good Star Wars on that streaming service, and I have a feeling that they will, they have got some good, they've got some good weapons in their armory. And as I say, I want to know how you feel, but I'm putting my head on the block right now, and I'm telling you, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will be the final cinematic Star Wars release and all the other content 
will be exclusive to Disney Plus. Now, as a business model, this is genius, especially as if I kind of guess it's going to be really good Star Wars as well. But of course, there's a sadness. But we are moving away from cinemas. These big studios doing streaming services means this. You are going to get more and more big movies, slowly but surely, really straight to streaming. And with the kind of money we're talking about with HBO Max, with Prime Video, with Netflix, Disney Plus, this is what's going to happen. And slowly but surely, the cinema experience will die. You can pretty much have a cinema system at home now, but you can't take away what it means to go to the cinema and sit there with strangers and get the reaction. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very special thing. But slowly but surely, they are killing off cinema. And this is what they're attempting to do with Star Wars. So remember who told you first that The Rise of Skywalker will be the last cinematic Star Wars film released. I think I'm going to enjoy the film. I think it is problematic because there doesn't seem to be much of a story left to tell because of what Ryan Johnson did. It seems to be kind of wrapped up. So you wonder what they're going to do with this. We know the Emperor's in it. I'm excited to see Palpatine again. Um, Lando's in it. That's very exciting as well. Look, he's got to contrive something epic here because he's got nothing epic to work with. Whatever JJ says publicly, he knows he was left with a big fat mess. He didn't want to come back to this, but he had to because he'd already been involved with it. And Bad Robot is already producing these films, co-producing them with Disney. So there wasn't an avenue where he could walk away. If this movie sucks, um, it's bad for Bad Robot. And Warner Bros. will start kind of thinking, did we make a mistake here? I don't think they have. I think J.J. Abrams is a good creative. He just needs to focus on a project at a time. That's J.J.'s problem. And again, with Star Wars, he did one film, walked away. And that's the problem. The other problem is having different directors, different ideas, making a trilogy that's supposed to be interconnected and continuing. And these were the problems with this trilogy. But there's no question about it for me. Star Wars is going to be exclusive to Disney+. Plus. Just remember, I told you first.